Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on the Executive Gardener channel. I'm your host, Jeff. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the appropriate proportion of key nutrients in a tomato plant, how to grow a successful container tomato plant. Now, this may also cross over into planting tomatoes in a garden, but I'm going to talk specifically today about all you out there that grow uh, tomato plants in, gar in, uh, in uh, pots, garden pots, or fabric pots. So all, and all of us know the key nutrients for most vegetable plants, the N, the nitrogen, the P, the phosphorus, the K, the potassium. So we're going to talk about those three. We're also going to talk about a few others, which are magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt. We're going to talk about calcium and magnesium. So those are three key micronutrients that your plants need as well. And when they're out of proportion, the N, the P, and the K, I'm going to show you the impact of what it does to a tomato plant. So I planted four cherry tomato plants, I think the Red Robin tomato plants, and in two of them I put extra nitrogen. And I'll show you what I use for nitrogen. And then in the other two I used a little pinch more phosphorus. So I'll show you the impact on the four plants, two and two, and what the impact of a disproportionate amount of nutrients can do to your plant. So let me just refresh and show you what I do, uh, what, what the key nutrients I use when I plant all of my container tomato plants, okay? So for the nitrogen, I do it mostly all organic. Uh, nitrogen, I use the organic blood meal. You can pick this up at most of your garden centers, and this is the nitrogen source. For the phosphorus, phosphorus source, I use fish bone meal, okay? And I get big bags of this, pretty inexpensive. For the potassium, I use uh, potassium sulfate, sulfate of potash, or potash, excuse me. Um, right here, I use that as a potassium. For the magnesium sulfate, I just got a gigantic bag at Lowe's for $5. Epsom salt, basic Epsom salt, critical to tomatoes and your peppers, okay? You need, uh, need to make sure there's magnesium sulfate. I did a video about this. And lastly, I want to talk about uh, uh, do uh, dolomite, so limestone. So if you use dolomite, the key ingredients in here are calcium and magnesium. And you can buy this online, relatively inexpensive. I think I got this one pound bag for $7 on eBay or something like that. But as most of you know, tomato plants, especially if you're planting them in a container, uh, the plants tend to drain the calcium in the soil in a container and then you get blossom end rot. Uh, I would, every three weeks I would put an additional supplement of calcium and magnesium into your tomato plant and make sure that your soil has enough calcium and magnesium as, as micronutrients to make sure you're not getting that blossom end rot. Same goes for pepper plants. Um, so by all means before you start adding um, nutrients to your garden, you should have your soil tested, okay, for pH and other things. Um, when you're doing containers, it's less of a worry for me because typically I put use potting mix and I add some of the key macro and micronutrients to it, so less of an issue for um, uh, tinkering it with garden container plants, but if you put too much of it at the end or too much of the phosphorus, again, I'll show you the impact of it as well. But it's important that you supplement your soil because in the container plants, all the key nutrients, the macro and the micro, will be pulled from it, from a plant like a tomato plant that uh, takes a lot of those nutrients up, okay? And that will give you a longer lifespan for your tomato plants or pepper plants or whatever you're planting in a container garden. Um, the thing I'd say, if you don't want to mess with all the ingredients I showed you, I actually found that uh, this uh, Epsoma tomato tome is actually a really good uh, nutrient or uh, organic fertilizer you can use in your garden and it has the key ingredients. Typically for tomato plants, when it comes to your macronutrients, you want uh, the N, the P, the K, you want uh, 5, 10, and 5, or 5, 10, and 10. You don't want too much nitrogen. If you have too much nitrogen, what you're going to get is more stem and leaf growth, less flowers, which turns into fruit. So let me show you what I did in this experiment. Again, in two of the container pots or pots, I put 
extra nitrogen in the blood meal, and I'll show you the impact. It's remarkable. In the others, I use the appropriate proportion of phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, and the, macro, the micronutrients I showed you. So let me flip the camera around, show you the experiment, and hope this is, uh, this is uh, I learned the lesson a long time ago, but this helps you in your gardening efforts. So here are the four plants that I experimented with. Let's take a look at them. It's not hard to tell. Remember what I told you. Two of them had the appropriate proportion of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and the micronutrients. The other two had an extra dose of the blood meal, which is nitrogen. So remember, nitrogen goes to more stem growth, more leaf growth, and will leave you with less flowers. So let's take a look at the two, which are obvious, which is what I... And these are the same variety of tomatoes, believe it or not. They are the same variety. But uh, if you'll take a look at this, look at the size of the leaves <laughs> compared on this plant, okay, compared to the leaves on this plant, okay? Big difference. In addition, I mean, look at the stem uh, on this plant. I mean, it's, it's uber thick on this as well, okay? You can see the stem there. And look at the stem on that plant. So, uh, it's really important. Uh, tomatoes, again, need a little bit of nitrogen, but not much. If you're using a, um, a, a formula, or if you could just use the Epsoma tomato tone, it should be 5-10-5 or 5-10-10. So more potassium, more phosphorus compared to nitrogen. Otherwise, as a result, what you're gonna get are plants that are big, not necessarily bushy, because these may bush out, but they have less flowers and more growth to the leaves and to the stem. So these two plants are twice as big as these two that had the appropriate proportion. So that's that. Now, you'll see the tomatoes are coming on. These tomatoes are a little bit bigger um, and you have less flowers. Most of the flowers are on, on the top of the plant, okay? Um, and again, they're grown in grow bags and I like to do that because I like to control the size of my cherry tomato plants so they don't vine all over the place. So let's go over here, okay? Let me get out of my shadow and take a look at the plants that had the appropriate proportion. So if you take a look at it, there's flowers everywhere on these plants, okay? And um, there's t cherry tomatoes on here as well. They're loaded with cherry tomatoes, but the reason they're loaded with cherry tomatoes is that there's more flowers. So I use the appropriate proportion of the N, the P, the K, and this is what I got. So you would much rather have these two plants, trust me, than those two. They take up more space, they'll have less tomatoes. It'll be interesting to see how they taste, but this is how you should do it. And I will tell you from a flower set, again, I put a pinch more phosphorus in this uh, than I did in those, but the key ingredient is I use much less bone meal, nitrogen, okay? And I would say this, these two plants have four times, it's hard to see, but four times more flowers set on it than those two, okay? So that's the importance of gardening. Again, you should always test your soil, but if you're going to be using the key uh, micro, uh, macronutrients, the N, the P, the K, uh, use the appropriate proportion. I recommend 5, 10, 10, okay? Also, um, what you should do, as I mentioned before I end the video, is always add some additional every three weeks, some of the micronutrients, the calcium, the magnesium, and the magnesium sulfate, okay? And uh, that will keep your plants uh, uh, very healthy, and it'll keep those micronutrients from being drained from the soil. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick episode uh, and hope you've learned from it. Again, 5, 10, 10 is the NPK mix that you want on tomato plants. Otherwise, you'll have too much N and the growth goes to the leaves versus the flowers and the tomatoes, okay? So that's it. Um, hope you've enjoyed this quick episode from the Executive Gardener channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Also, share it with a friend that may be interested in getting into gardening. Until next time, take care. Bye.